In the early videos in the course, we learned about composing functions with matching types. In the last video, we explored three basic structures that give us new ways to compose values. As you noticed, composition is always the central point of our discussions, whether directly or indirectly. In this video, we'll take a closer look at magma, semigroup, and monoid structures in practice. Additionally, I will demonstrate how to create more concise functions using the point free style. All right, let's just start by an example. Let's define a function called add all, which receives a list of numbers, add all of them up, and returns a number. But before anything, let me import all the stuff that we need. We need list, cons, nil, and match to do pattern matching. By the way, if this looks new to you, please check out my video on list in this playlist. So add all function of type add all receives list of number. And what do we want to do is we want to recursively look into this list and add all of the numbers and return the result. So we start with doing pattern matching over our list of numbers. In case our list is empty, we want to return a value that doesn't do anything when we are adding numbers, like a neutral value for adding numbers, which is zero. In case our list is not empty, then we're going to have a head. And we keep the rest of the list inside the tail. What we do, we add head to recursively calling at all over tail. Let's try this. Console log, add all. Let's try this with list of two, three, and four. If I save, we see nine in the output in the right side. Before we move forward, let me show you a technique. Take a look at this part of match. What does it return? It returns a function that receives a list of number and returns a number. What about add all? It's a function that receives a list of number and returns a number. What happens if I remove xs from both sides? No linting error, and if I save, we get the same result. Take a moment and think about this. This is called point-free form or style. Point-free form means that the function is defined without explicitly mentioning one or more of its parameters. It's not always possible to do this in JavaScript and TypeScript, and it doesn't always make the function easier to read. But when it does, it's definitely worth it. If you want to see how you can think about it and when you can actually use it, let me put back the xs. If you think of functions like add all as a mathematical equation, it's like we are canceling xs, the same parameter, from the right of the both sides of the equation. Get used to this syntax. You will see this a lot in functional programming. All right, let's move on to our next example. Next one is multiply all, which receives again a list of number. Multiply all of them together and returns a number. So multiply all of type multiply all receives the list of number, and you know what? This time, I'm going to do this in point free form. So match. What do we want to return if our list is empty? We want to return a value that doesn't do anything when we are multiplying numbers, which is one. What happens if our list is not empty? Then we're going to have a head. And we keep the rest of the list inside tail. And we multiply head with recursively calling 
multiply all with tail. Let me make more space here. And let's try this. Multiply all and let's try this with our previous list, which is two, three, four. If I save, we get 24. Our last example is append all, which receives a list of this time string, concatenate all those strings together and return a string. So append all of type append all. Actually, let's try this in a point free form. So match. In case our list is empty, we want to return a value that doesn't do anything when we are concatenating strings, which is an empty string. And if our list is not empty, then we're going to have a head and the rest of the list inside tail. And what do we want to do is we concatenate head with recursively calling at all over tail. In TypeScript and JavaScript, we can actually concatenate, concatenate strings with plus signs too. All right, let's try this. Console log, append all. And for our example, we have a list of hello, cons, empty space, cons, word. and nil for specifying the end of the list. If I save, we get hello world in the right side. Take a look at these three functions. They look pretty similar, right? Except the way we combine values and the initial values. Can we define one function instead of repeating ourselves three times? Yes, we can. We just need to find a way to abstract the differences. And that's exactly what Magma does. So let me make a little bit of a space here. Magma is a type with a binary operation on it. This binary operation receives two value of that type, combines them, and return a value in the same type. In our definition here, magma is an interface on any type A that has a binary operation like concat. Concat is a method on this interface that receives two parameters of type A and returns the same type A. But in practice, we almost always need an extra requirement. We need our concat operation to be associative. And that is exactly the definition of semi-group structure. Semi-group is a magma, meaning it's a structure on type A with a concat operation that is associative. Unfortunately, we cannot encode associativity in TypeScript. So how can we make sure our instances of semi-group are associative? We may look into this in future, but the short answer is by writing tests for those instances. As I explained in the previous videos, concat is associative if the order of applying a sequence of them is not important. This is a pretty useful feature, because as I explained in the previous video, it provides us with means to do parallel computation. Let's define semi-group instances for our cases above. So our first one is add semi-group, which is of type semi-group of number, and the concat operation works like this. It receives two values and it adds them together. For the multiply semi-group, again, it's a semi-group of type number and this time concat receives two values 
and multiply them. For a pen semigroup, which this time is a semigroup of type string, concat operation receives two strings and concat them. Now we are ready to define our general concat all function. So again, let me make a little bit of space. So concat all, it first receives an instance of a semigroup of any type A, meaning our function is a generic function. Then uh, we need to pass the initial value. Let's call it start with, and it's in type A. And finally, we pass it the list of A. The function is going to concatenate all the A's and finally returns an A. So the first thing we do, similar to before, we do pattern matching over our list of A. In case our list is empty, we need to return the initial value, which is a start with. And in case our list is not empty, then we're going to have a head. And let's keep the rest inside tail, list of A. And what do we want to do? We want to call the concat on our semi-group, pass the head, and then recursively call concat all with S, then a start with, and finally, the tail. All right, let's try our concat all function with our semi-groups now. Concat all. So the first one is adding numbers. So we add add semi-group. The initial value for it would be zero for adding numbers. And then our list. Let's try to test this with our list of two, three, four. If I save, again, we see nine. For multiplying numbers, concat all multiply semi-group for multiplying the initial value is one and let's try the list again two three and four if i save we see 24 again and the last one append the strings concat all append semi-group the initial value for appending strings is empty string. And let's try this with hello world again. Hello, cons, empty space, cons, word. If I save, we get hello world again. But as you see, every time we are talking about adding numbers, we use the initial value of zero, multiplying one, appending a strings, empty string. Why not abstracting this start with value inside our interface? And that is exactly the monoid. If we can always have a same starting point, have a same neutral value to combine our type, we can define an instance of monoid. So monoid of type A is a semi-group, but it has an extra property on it, the neutral value, which we call it empty. And it's in type A. So again, let's define the concat all again, this time with monoid. Before that, we need to define the instance of our monoid. So the first one is add monoid of type monoid of number. 
we have the concat. We already implemented that, right? So, and it's a add semi-group. For the empty, we have zero. For the multiply monoid, we have monoid of number again. And monoid is a semi-group, so we can do, we can use the concat from multiply semi-group and add the empty of for multiplying one. And for append monoid, we have monoid of string. Let's use the append semi-group an empty value for appending strings, concatenating strings is empty string. All right, let's redefine concat all but this time for monoids. Let me make a little bit of a space again. So const concat all two, what it first received is, first it's going to receive a monoid of type A. Again, our function is a generic function. We don't need to start with, right? We can immediately receive a list of A and return A. What we do now, we are going to first again pattern match over our list of A. If our list is empty, then we are going to return M dot empty. But if our list is not empty, meaning we have a head and we keep the rest of the list inside tail. And the way we're going to concat, monoid is a semi-group, so we're going to have concat on it. And the first thing is going to be head. The second one, we're going to recursively call concat all two again. Pass M. And the list is going to be tail this time. All right, let's try this. So the first example is going to be adding numbers. Concat all two. We pass add monoid. Then we're going to pass our list, which is again cons two, three, and four. If I save, we get nine. Goes to log concat all two with multiply monoid and the list again, two, three, four. If I save, we get 24. And last one, concatenating strings. So we pass append monoid and our list is going to be again, hello, empty space and word. And if I save, we get hello world again. All right. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one.